for for joining us and 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 contributing to this because this is quite a key topic in terms of uh, the issues about strategy. Um, David comes from a, a background and a lot of expertise in terms of governance and project management, etc. Uh, I've come from a background and, and my experience is in helping organisations to develop and implement their strategies. And one of the key issues that we have is, and, and organisations have, is the difficulties of actually implementing and delivering a strategy successfully. Sorry, um, Davis. Sorry to interrupt you. Um, as you can see, I'm not the usual person who runs events, so I'm not as slick as Santos and Katrina. I just need to mention that we are recording this session, and um, so everybody is aware under our privacy policy. Apologies for interrupting you. No problem at all. Very key key things. Uh, David, do you want to stick on the next slide, please? Sorry, keep. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So what we want to cover in the presentation, and uh, again, it's there to stimulate, um, as you'll see in a minute, certainly to stimulate some some interactions, some ideas from yourselves as well. So first of all, the problem, and who's concerned about it, and then secondly, Dave is going to go through a, almost a step by step approach and how to address the challenge of strategy delivery and improving the organization's ability to implement its strategy. And then briefly, what can we expect from this process and a summary of, of next steps? So very, very simple agenda. Thanks, David. If you search for uh, just a very simple search for strategy implementation, strategy delivery, and you will come across a lot of information about the difficulties and the problems about strategy execution. Typically, <clears throat> that is where people say that the whole process of strategic planning and implementing falls down. And lots of reasons and lots of numbers, some big numbers, some frighteningly big numbers about the problem. And this in the work that David and I have done together with organizations has been reflected as well, as, as, as we'll see by many people, it, it resonates. Um, the struggle to implement successfully a strategy is something that so many organizations encounter at, at various stages. Thanks, David. In theory, in theory, the strategy management process is theoretically quite straightforward. You, you, you develop your strategy, <clears throat> you define your objectives, your targets, your challenges, you put your implementation plan into place. The board has a, and the senior executives have a real clear step-by-step um, -step approach to handing it over, to entrusting the delivery experts to do it. And guess what? It doesn't happen. And the confidence the issues that you've got, the perspectives about what's going wrong can grow within that process. So it obviously isn't a simple, simple process. Thanks, David. Yeah, the, uh, the, the, the magic, somehow the magic happens. Is it isn't, isn't me or David making up that word. It's um, one of my best friends is the CEO of an Australian uh, supermarket chain. And uh, that the, the, was his language is that that they they carefully construct the strategy, but then it, it's very it's, it's very difficult to understand um, what's coming back. Um, and, and we'll certainly elaborate on that. I had a couple of interesting cartoons and diagrams to illustrate some of the issues. Um, uh, so, for example, have you got that real flow of ideas coming in, or is there a barrier? between your proposals and your your, your ability as an organization to, uh, in strategic management term to incorporate different people's ideas and different things as they come uh, as they come through and secondly is everything clearly mapped out or are you expecting processes to happen where they don't actually exist in your organization you've not set up the enablers you've not set up the right facilitation or the information that enables some of the gaps of delivery to occur. So there can be a number of reasons. Thanks, David. And to 
set the ball rolling and to get everybody tuned into this, um, we've got this uh, using Slido to try and capture your reasons. So we'd like to hear from you in terms of what reasons have you encountered in your organisations and your experiences for why strategies have not been delivered. Uh, and this is a great tool, um, as you'll see. So David, I don't know whether you want to explain how, it's, how it works and what happens. Yeah, I think some people have already got in there actually. But if you if you uh, on your on your phone, say, um, if you log on to uh, slido.com on your phone and then provide the the number there three six three nine six eight one eight four, it'll take you to uh, a live uh, poll that's active. Um, and just please um, throw in some thoughts. What reasons have you encountered for why strategies have not been delivered? And um, this is what people have been saying so far. Um, resourcing, yeah, vagueness of detail. The, the resourcing one, David, is really interesting because um, there, there, are, there are folks uh, thinking about defining resource for the project or program, but it's it's getting resource uh, um, allocated uh, between business as usual and change activity. So it's it's uh, people often forget that we're we're prioritising resource, not not just um, magicking it out of nowhere. That's a great point, um, David. I think um, lots of organisations struggle with, um, certainly in my experience, you know, you start out major transformations or major strategic programmes and, and our leadership think you can do it off the side of the desk as a part time job with your BAU and then very quickly realise, you know, when it's not progressing the way we'd like to, that we actually need to second people sometimes out of BAU to deliver the strategic intent. That, Indeed, that disconnect as well between strategy formulation and strategy delivery or the people that are doing that. That was shown, I think, in one of the cartoons as well. Ah, programs, projects not aligned to, to strategy. Mm, interesting one. Well, it, well, indeed. I mean, uh, there's there's um, the, the translate strategy to tactical plan on how to do that. The the cascade is is yeah. it's difficult, isn't it? Um, the other. I don't think anyone's mentioned uh, uh, sponsorship yet. The uh, the the um, the role of of sponsorship in 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 championing uh, strategic objectives through the business and taking accountability for for objectives like that. I'm not sure anyone's, is that is that something people have found themselves, or is that a new one that I've just thrown up there? There was certainly some comment about stakeholders and and, and the scope not clearly defined, etc. Um, as well, and then get I think another one I saw earlier was engagement. Uh, I wonder if uh, people are from a business that that um, comes up with its five year plan, but then uh, doesn't necessarily that might communicate that five year plan once, but then doesn't have a process which cascades those five year plan elements into the annual business planning processes for different departments yeah. and doesn't necessarily then cascade from those business plans into projects and programs. <clears throat> oh, that, that's an interesting one. Business unit leads not really aware of the strategy and see projects as being for their needs and strategies for other people. Wow. <laughs> that, like that. that's, uh... But it's a good point that isn't it because it is. people see this change change can be local innovation which enables me to hit my target but i've then got change which is strategic change which is corporate so so i, I need to balance the strategic projects i have with the local initiatives and innovations that i want with me hitting my business targets locally it's this, and, uh, it's this disconnect between um what is perceived as being organizational strategy and either business as usual or individual projects, it isn't seen holistically in so many organisations. It's not seen as being one integrated whole, um, which is, is, is really, uh, really a big flaw. That there is some really great, I hate comments coming in about this. Um, please, please keep them coming, guys. We're going to have yeah. to... Um, uh, move on in, in a second but please keep the comments coming if you want to and what we'll do I, I, I'll get all the comments that people raise and um, as a, as a follow-up I'll bang them into a spreadsheet classify them and, and give you some playback we'll give you some playback 
on 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 some of these points uh with, with answers from what we're going to present to come so uh so we, we can't we can't leave this open for too long but but uh i think we're getting the general idea david aren't we yeah shall we move on and we'll, we'll capture those and whatever so and maybe come back to some of the questions at the end maybe So this is one we've prepared earlier. So some possible reasons, and you can you can see from the comments that you've all made how uh, how some of these actually resonate um, with your own experiences. Um, uh, communication, uh, this, the, the the drivers, not pr the priorities, etc. Wrong. Um, uh, we've got another one there. Information information not reliable. Um, uncertainty behind it. So yes, lots of lots of reasons behind it. What what I think it really shows from the comments and the responses is a couple of things. First of all, just how common that experience is of strategy not being delivered successfully, um, and how diverse the problems are that um, can lead to the, that that gap. Um, Next, move to the next slide, David, please. Well, just, just two quick ones oh, for me, David. Just very briefly, my two favourites are drivers for strategy not clear and prioritised or translated effectively, as in as in, we're not we're not getting the reason for strategy into the business and connected to what business is doing. And the other one is priority does not balance BAU change and value generation. People talk about prioritising projects, but the reality is resources, finance and leadership time is spread across those three things. So we have to we have to prioritize those three things, not just the projects. Yeah. Um, but uh, next, next, sorry. Yeah, sorry, yeah, thanks. Um, we when we've um, run events like this before, um, one of the events in, in in March, for example, we've analyzed the comments um, made by participants about the issues in the same way as that you've been feeding through, and it's very clear um, about the range of different issues. Uh, that you could categorise from strategic management to people and culture to information issues and also the different perspectives that different people have from their organisational role as well um, and obviously a lot of commonality so it doesn't mean to say that simply because you have a particular role in an organisation in an organisation that's the only you are still seeing a lot of problems across the organization in terms of how how strategy is delivered and how it could be improved so quite interesting in terms of the range and the variety and the different perspectives that people have next slide david please i think coming out of that and all of that is that the only way in which you could really start to consider how to improve strategy delivery in organizations and that join between strategy formulation strategy strategic management strategy delivery is to look at holistically at the organization itself and the different elements that might make it uh, make up um, some of the issues and how they're combined and it's not just the elements um, David, if you move on to the next slide, please. it's the connections and the processes and the communication between those elements that's absolutely key. Organisations are dynamic and the flow and how they work together is and how the various elements work together and the various aspects is so critical. And it's making that making those flows work that helps um, in terms of the processes and the delivery and the understanding of strategy and and how you manage the projects and the delivery and the implementation. Next slide, please, David. So, um, hand over to David now to go through how an approach to how to actually address the challenge. Okay, so there's, there's quite a a bit to cover there so a number of different interested parties um we're not talking about um lumping it this all into one area to to magically uh, force change across across the piece um what, what would to, to address the challenge uh, I, I guess we need to be inclusive 
so so we we uh, promote this idea of of step one open discovery so if if you like the idea of, of improving your strategy delivery and and you get that there are there are components uh, across the business that are going to influence that and 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 deal with the many challenges that we've brainstormed out together then o open discovery is, is about um listening to people's viewpoint taking their perspective um uh, get it, getting their priorities uh, understanding what's good understanding what's bad and it, it's it's doing it without perhaps even thought too much of what the answer might be so so open discovery re really has to engage people and and uh, because this is such a a, a broad um uh, topic uh, to to cover and it touches all of the areas of the business we we think that it's important to to engage with perspectives of of all the senior stakeholders in our perspective um and that that uh, we, we we don't necessarily uh, only speak to one area maybe we're tempted to to initiate and drive this out of say a pmo or or maybe it's a finance director's baby but instead of being um coming out of one domain or another we, we try to encourage uh, all all domains to recognize what's good recognize what's bad understand each other's priorities and 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 gain gain consensus on on what what uh, what need what needs to be improved not necessarily designing what needs what exactly needs to be be, be improved but but agreeing to do something um that's an important first step if if we don't have people agreeing to do something then when we start doing things at some point we'll hit a brick wall with them so so let's let's get on the same page let's recognize the issues understand each other's viewpoints and, and get commitment to do something because um as as we've seen um the, there will be some common issues if if we engage these these different senior folks there will be uh, common issues uh, across them they, they'll all have a perspective of one thing or another uh, being important to them um, but they'll have different perspectives and different priorities so can we gain consensus on not just what the issues are but but who has which issues so everyone can can get a feeling that that there's something in it for them and that that by by addressing uh, this this problem, we can not only solve um, the, the the strategy delivery perspective, but also uh, uh, give give them something in it for them for their for their operational needs as well. And uh, but by doing this, we can then move on to envisioning what the answer might be, um, with everyone understanding all all that's necessary. And and fingers crossed, we, we'll we'll get a better answer out of the process that way. Um, to my mind, this step. Uh, is is something people miss they jump straight into what the pro what the uh, answer should be and start trying to solve things before they've really engaged people and brought them into the, the process in the first place so um if we have done that open discovery if we've opened ourselves up and listened and heard and and mutually understood um we we, we may tease out many of the issues in, in that kind of process but um, we also need to be a little bit objective about it because groups sometimes don't necessarily talk about things that are unpleasant or difficult. Um, so uh, in, in our opinion, including a bit of objective assessment in with the open discovery is, is really important to, to, to pick up anything we've missed. And for example, um, I, I guess most people will be familiar with uh, P3M3 um, maturity assessments in the portfolio program and project domain. Well, there, there are. There's. There, we've we've done an, a, a a maturity and capability assessment uh, around in, in this domain. So, uh, we've got a question set which is broken down uh, in in against the headings that uh, uh, against each component that make up the business integrated governance model. And by uh, uh, going through these questions, which we can tweak and adjust, we'll we'll be able to. Um, get engagement on maybe points that that perhaps wouldn't come out come out of of, of natural discussion and, and we can we can spot things and and tease things out which which uh, perhaps wouldn't otherwise have done so with the with the um um open discovery uh, the, the the tactile um 
listening and and uh, understanding process, the objective assessment, just to make sure we haven't missed anything. Um, when we've when we've gathered this kind of viewpoint, we need then to make it visible. We need to make it visible in a way that enables people to understand where where the pain points are and where the possible games might be, and do that in a way that's non-threatening and doesn't cause reaction. And instead of causing reaction, it it it, uh, it initiates a, a positive response. So making it visible, we'll have the the data available in various forms, obviously, but. We can simplistically uh, play back to people and, and give them a, a an understanding of of what their maturity level is in in various different areas. And in this area, for example, we can spot that maybe accountability isn't a strong point, or or maybe in this scenario, the use of technology isn't great. We can start to get people tuned in to to this this whole scenario and and what's what's good and what isn't. And, and enable us to to prioritize what we need to get on top of. Um, for example, in, in this scenario, we're pretty happy with the insurance regime and the service level that fits underneath it. It can be positive as well. Don't forget, it's not about beating people up. So having, having visualized roughly where, um, we can then start to do playback. So we, we've got our meeting notes, we've understood uh, the one-to-one -one sessions that, that people have given us. We've done the objective assessment and scored and, and rated, uh, but now we need to get people on the same page. And as I said, we need to do this in a way that gets people to understand, that to recognise, but also to, to respond, not react. Um, so, in, and this is an example that um, we've done recently with a, with a, a finance organisation. And the results of uh, meeting all of their uh, senior levels and 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 senior middle managers gave us a, a few points. I'm not I'm not going to go into all of them. There's quite a few here, but in this organisation, the translation of business strategy into operating business plans wasn't particularly well happening. The business strategy was was there in a, a nice PowerPoint, um, but when I looked in, there, there was no process by which uh, objectives were were responded to in business plans. Um, the, the IT strategy was was pretty well managed, but but uh, the, the the different business areas um, weren't uh, specifically mapping uh, business strategy objectives into their business plans, which was unusual. Um, another couple of issues we found, and I'll just uh, not go any further than these. But for for change across their business, they didn't have a change portfolio. They had. They they didn't have uh, the 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 they couldn't see all of the initiatives that were ongoing or understand what the priorities were. They weren't effectively allocating resources. Um, that that the, some of the change projects simply would just manically shift because people hadn't put any time into them. Um, that there wasn't. It also wasn't clear to us if there was any um, benefit realization going on as part of an individual uh, directorate's governance regime. So we weren't being able to help hold people to account. So we went round the clock and I'm not going to go into detail, but we went round the clock and, and basically used this 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 framework um, to, to uh, comment on. And, and this basically was a playback to their, their senior leadership team um, of, of the, the interviews they'd given, the independent assessment we'd done and to, to get consensus that, that there was something that we needed to do. And, and this seemed to do that to, uh, reasonably well. Um, well, that's only the half of it, isn't it? We we've um, we we can make it visible. We can understand where the pain points are. We can make it specific and come up with an agreeable way to to engage people to 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 get consensus as to what what uh, the problems are. But we need a framework for action. We, it's no good just agreeing what the problem is. We need to work out what next. And um, we used the same structure. So, but instead of in this example um, laying out what the problems were, we would lay out what we thought the responses were. So this is high level. It's not really a design, if you like. It, it's it's a it's a statement of intent. So we're, we're using this approach not to try and design. We're using it to try and engage. And we concluded that in response to the the organisation issues. We needed to instigate a quarterly strategy review, which was driven from the from driven from operating plan updates, which came from directorates, which included 
progress on 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 activity, but also status on outcomes that were expected from the transformation. So a, a simple statement, but very clear as to as to what the implication would be. We agreed that we would instigate an initiated change portfolio to pull together all the change across the business and to, to integrate it and validate it and formalize prioritization of business as usual resources and, and change to enable a, a, a more effective resource management process so that we, we weren't just um, gobbling up uh, time allocated for strategic work uh, to, to, to solve one directorate's immediate uh, problem or, or completely. Um, and, and that we were, we were taking a balanced approach for for planning for today and planning for tomorrow. And we concluded we would include adoption and benefit review as part of the business as usual for each directorate so that it could be accountable for 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 investments that were made um, uh, out, out of its out of its budget. And, and we went round the clock and and did this for the whole thing. So in a very simple page, we, we one page we were able to understand the status and and the problems that we've got consensus to achieve and then the next page we'd come up we'd agree what the responses would be as to how to go about that and this this was a, this is a vital step that i think a lot of people miss in in that they go straight on to what the de detailed design is before um they've, they've really understood what there's consensus to actually do and take on and, and bump into problems with with uh, with disagreements later. If we tease them out here, then we were on the right on the right foot, if you like. So if we've agreed what the framework for action is and all that we'd like to do, clearly we've got to um, we can't do everything at once. We have to prioritize. And we've got a couple of examples here, and and clearly, how do we prioritize? Well, um, I guess uh, the amount of pain that the uh, that people are going to suffer and uh, the, the amount of solution they'll get and, and the level of seniority they have will perhaps give us a uh, prioritization but there'll be a, a sequence to what we can do there'll be maybe budget limitations that will constrain how much we can achieve at once but it should be feasible to to lay out those those objectives into a sequence that we can now start talking about change for um, it, it, it doesn't really matter what what this contains, but the, this 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 um, picture is a, is a is maybe a, a top down viewpoint as to what their priorities are. That maybe we want the the main board and portfolio management solution first, then we want portfolio and program sorted. It, just, it doesn't really matter, but the, there's, a, there's a preference to to approach um, um, delivery of, of of benefit in a top down approach. But it's equally uh, as valid to think about it as a as a bottom up approach, and maybe as a, from a as a PMO driven uh, perspective, might well be that uh, okay, we're, if we're looking to to improve our strategic process, then maybe we should build up to that capability and and build the enablers before we try and drive uh, what what the uh, the higher level um, benefits would be. It doesn't really matter. It's just it, all we're illustrating here is that if you've if you brainstorm the problems, envisioned what the answers might be, it's just a case of creating a strategy for how, how you address that. Um, but uh, so how do you go about this? Well, there, there are there are there are two two threads to this. Um, there are, the first thread is is capability, and the the second thread is the information journey. So in terms of capability, what we're looking here to do is, is define that mechanism that the, 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 the process, the structure, the governance model for, for how we can connect strategy to delivery. And like uh, with, with any program, um, we create a business case, we'd, we'd create some assets and make some write some process and, and get get ready with how we're going to work and line things up. We then um, uh, transition into culture change where we're getting people to to uh to, to we're adjusting to their behaviors and getting them to to operate in a consistent way that works and once we're through the culture change we're into sustainment to make it better and improve it and uh, the the kickoff for that is that first steps engagement where we, we've understood that there's something to solve but that's only the one thread creating the mechanism creating the ecosystem to make this work is is only half of it because in parallel with that 
um, we're not just going to make the magic happen um, solving this. We need to work on the information journey as well. So what does the strategy currently contain? What, how is that translated into business plans? How, what is the connection from business plan to, to, to portfolio, to project, to, to program, to project and so on? So what do we have in terms of strategy information? So that the first step uh, beyond the first step is, is well, let's capture what we currently have. Let's clarify the strategy and clarify what we have in place that describes how to deliver the strategy. Let's build the information model that's appropriate to run our strategy with. So and once we've captured, clarified and, and built the information model, we can then connect up and operate it using the, the, the information that using the, uh, the capability we've, we've built in parallel. So to me, that makes perfect sense. Think about the capability, build that, think about the, the strategy itself and get the information good, clean that up. And before you know it, you, you've, these, these two threads can combine and, and you're up and running in a, in a, in a future world. And um, the, the purpose of first steps, um, it, it, the idea is that um, we, we engage in this process uh, and we understand that there'll be all kinds of uncertainty, uncertainty and reticence, inertia to overcome. But if we understand who has the pain, who has potential gain, we can understand and talk to them about their situation. If we develop a, a capture model, which helps us express to people what their situation is and what they think the problem is by scribbling and scratching, that's, that's all that works pretty well. So we can tease out and gain consensus on the gains, brainstorm out what a vision might look like to address those, those pains, to show us how reasonably we can expect to achieve, achieve gains and maybe cycle this around a few times into the process comes uncertainty and and lack of understanding and reticence and inertia out of the process becomes trust enthusiasm and and uh, the wish to to actually do something about it even though we perhaps haven't defined exactly what by this stage a slightly different step to tack on to the start of a project uh, we i think is important really important for for this kind of work So David, I think think I'm back over to you now. Thanks, David. Um, some of the lessons and some of the key points that we distilled in previous opportunities, we've expanded and we've talked about this with people um, following this process. And here's something from the previous discussions in terms of some of the key points um, that would really make a difference in terms of the principles to adopt to improve strategy implementation. The first thing, critical one, is an organisation wide approach. Um, strategy, strategy formulation, strategy implementation is across the organisation, cross domain, cross functional. Um, I'm not a great believer personally in uh, delegating strategy to any level of the organisation or um, and, and letting it reside there or to any specialist area yes to help formulate it but it has to be engaged like any part of the organization with the rest of it to be really effective the flexibility um i think somebody mentioned in the there were some comments in the initial slido response about how strategy can change and how therefore the plans don't adapt and can change this is particularly relevant and it's been coming increasingly re relevant after the last couple of years and recognised about the, the need that the increased uncertainty, the greater risks, the increased need for flexibility in terms of strategy and building the capabilities to be able to be much more dynamic with your strategy development and that adaptation to circumstances is absolutely cr critical now within developing um, good strategy management in organizations. It's also a learning journey for the organization. And the word journey is, um, is quite key. Um, I, I interviewed some successful strategy leaders not so long ago, and what came out from all of the conversation is that improving their organization strategic management and its delivery was a, was a journey they were taking step by step. It wasn't a single answer. They were prepared to embark on 
and take their organisations with a process of learning and improving and engaging people so that everybody around them, their management team, the people in the organisation could grow and learn from that. And of course, people is key. And the values and culture, and this came across from uh, so much from some of the conversations we've had before, is having that approach to, to the other people in the organisation and how you think about it that is really quite important, um, rather than some instances people being seen as a costly, um, costly resource that's very flexible. It's how you treat your people and how you engage them um, and the culture and how you get the most out of them, particularly when you're going through change projects or improvement projects. Each organisation is different and understanding its context is really, really vital. Um, and understanding how all the parts fit together or in this case, how they can fit together better to help it is key. And you need to be clear about the benefits before starting to deliver, in particular the, st the strategy benefits, not just the uh, red, amber, green of whether a project's on track or whatever, but actually what is it really intended to do and are those benefits in terms of strategy, uh, strategic intent actually being delivered? And to focus on the value um, versus the progress of delivery and having the flexibility to change a roadmap where necessary and to take people with you in terms of those changes. Um, so long gone are the days when you have the strategic plan, you came down with your tablets of stone with a document, you put it on your shelf, the board had agreed it, and you delegated down into the projects and off you went. Um, document never got used again, um, and then it all dissipated. No, this is about dynamic change and continual changes, continual process. David, Commitment. Can I, can I just add, add something in here? Just uh, folks, I'm just curious. Um, the, uh, for the, be, I'd be interested to uh, to hear uh, maybe on the Slido, if if you uh, were to simply uh, comment, I have. Um, whilst David continues, can, can you comment if uh, comment with I have, if if you already have a, a clear operational model that's holding your strategy together. Was it was it a little bit piecemeal? So if you have a, a model that works and is documented, you understand it. Pl please comment. I have because I'd be interested to see how many people have, have got that from the from the community we have on today. Sorry, David. That's all right. Now the, the <clears throat> last couple of points that came up is about that commitment to embark on that journey. Um, it takes time, and I've, I think I've seen that in one of the chat comments as well. It takes time for implementation and takes time for improvement and sustained effort. It's not a, a quick quick win or quick switch. It's about a journey of improvement and engagement. And it's a collective endeavor. It's across the organization. It's not strategy versus delivery, um, projects versus business as usual. It's an integrated whole that, that's, that, that's absolutely key in terms of the approach. Next slide, please, David. Just a time warning, um, David, it's 12.44, so. We're just about there, Jackie, we're just about there. Okay. So the outcomes and expectations from this journey, you get stronger strategic management. You get a much more aligned organisation, more effective strategy delivery, increased agility, and efficient and effective governance. And that's the aim to achieve these outcomes from engaging in that. That's what you're after at the end of the day from this process, from this journey. And David, next slide, please. So, summary, every organisation is different. Every organisation is unique and understanding that and helping them to understand this is absolutely key. You need commitment to that journey of improvement um, and a collective commitment from all engaged that this is a process and this is an approach that will yield long term sustainable benefits because people are learning and developing and going through this all the time. And critical, that first step. Taking that first step is vital um, in terms of engaging in that. And the final slide, please, David. So, yes, so open for Jackie for questions, comments and observations and we'd love to engage. And sorry, David, you've got one more, I think, just to, to go on as a uh, as to, to whilst we listen to the questions and 
try and answer them. So <laughs> thanks, Jackie. And I think there was a question uh, I asked, which is like when you talk about the strategy and the you know the the challenges with delivery. I suppose it's a question that's been posed in a lot of organizations I've encountered on my career journey, which is where should that like leader of the PMO sit in that discussion? And I suppose the question is, based on your guys' experience, do you think the PMO exec lead should be involved in, uh, be participative in the strategy development to gain that understanding of what needs to be done? Because then that's almost bridging and helping to be able to, you know, avoid some of those issues that um, are the common pitfalls, so to speak. I'll, I'll pick this one, David. Um, well, I've, I've just literally um, come off a, a session uh, that I ran from 10.30 to 11.30 today, which um, was discussing how high maturity PMOs can, can affect the strategic process. And um, it, it's, a, it's a, long, a longer discussion that, um, but certainly I think we need a, an effective PMO to support project delivery. But what we're talking about here is maybe even losing the word project from, from the function that, that helps here. Because we're looking to go uh, across project, program, business as usual, and value generation. So is that is the, is the function that provides support across those domains a project office? I think that's not the right term for it now. So we refer to the, 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 we refer to business support, of which project support will be part, but the 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 the, the the business support function to aggregate support from across across many projects, programs, products, but also to engage with the strategic process and provide assistance at that level. So we think okay. it's a broader and deeper and more mature version of, of what might be a PMO right now. And I suppose from my perspective, I think what I see it is more like a value management office is probably the more pro is the, the appropriate term rather than PMO, because you're looking right across the function of the organization for value to the organization, not just about the individual projects, et cetera. So I think that's quite interesting. And um, there was a couple of other questions. Um, strategy implementation takes time. What do you recommend in how to get this time and to be allowed to do this implementation? That comes from Rosemary. You need patience and you need the acceptance about change and you need within that process the understanding that this is dynamic, that things can change, that it's continual. Um, so one of the one of the key things um, one of the key things in this is that you've uh, your ability as an organisation to think and continue to think about the strategically in your strategy and your delivery, and it's no long it's not a sequential process it's ongoing, and to understand that the journey of implementing a strategy is just that things don't always work out other things can change you need that mechanism that infrastructure that information flow mm. that dialogue that conversation the ability to do it to make sure that you are steering the organization and allowing the time and the patience to for, for, for the implementation to occur and that understanding across the organization and support for implementation of projects that would be my my response to that but I think there's two parts to it, David. There's, there's the um, delivery of strategy itself, and then there's creation of the ecosystem that supports strategy ongoing. Um, so cre creation of the ecosystem itself, one, one to, to me, it, the, what's what's vital is is the process to engage. It, it's that uh, it's that consensus on the pain points. It's um, consensus on the current situation, and an agreement to do something, even if what exactly to do isn't isn't agreed and for me this is quite vital and my, my experience of 25 years implementing ppm portfolio management type solutions is that folks jump want to jump into what the answer is they want to jump into buy the tool or or, or provide the training or or um or set up the pmo when when there isn't necessarily uh appetite to do that so for this kind of change we think we believe it strongly. Believe that the, agree, defining the appetite and getting the consensus to do something is the vital first step. Else, we bump into to barriers and blockers later on. So it's it's a slightly slower burn and, and, a, and a slightly uh, 
a wider and 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 taller reaching engagement process. Hey, thank you. Thank you both, David. There's another question here from Gerard who asks, how do you avoid burnout if, a, if strategy involves a lot of change? Most people have limited capacity. <clears throat> Manage it. Um, uh, look, acro look across your, your resource yeah. commitments to value generation, um, business as usual activity and change and maintain a, a resource model for, for what you're doing across those three areas so that so you you actively prioritize how you deploy your resources and leadership and funds, um, but based on how important um, change, uh, business as usual targets and value generation is. Yeah. Um, how, how many organisations have a have, have in their in their individual directorates have a model which show uh, that their their split of, of resource between uh, ch uh, activity for now, change for tomorrow, and value generation for the future. And in, Thank you, to, I'd say. in addition to that as resource to add to that, one of the key aspects of strategic leadership or, or leadership in total is understanding the energy of your organisation as well and how, how both teams and individuals, how that energy is being deployed and how you're engaging and you're motivating. And, and you, you're quite right. It is so easy, a couple of things, it's so easy to, to launch um, with almost too much energy, too many things at the same time and yeah. to lose the connections. And the same uh, It's also you can see not just a burnout, but you can see a fatigue of projects as well as things go on. So one of the key aspects of strategic leadership is to understand how that is panning out and how your resources are and be able to manage the both the people resources, but also the people and departmental and organisational energy in, in your organisation in order to be able to steer that and adjust accordingly. There's a good anecdote that a friend of mine's come up with. He, he works with boards and does uh, strategic programme delivery quite a lot. And, and he's, he's, his anecdote is that you may well have 20 things you want to achieve, but don't do more than five at once. Yeah. Great. Absolutely yeah, agreed. I, I, I've seen that in lots of organisations myself where we think starting the 20 great things we want to get done is going to move us along the path and you're just there. No, it leads to burnout. It leads to lack of progress. There's no focus. We don't know which the top five are. We don't want we don't know which yields the best bang for the book for the organisation, the best value. And like it just becomes, you know, very difficult environment to work in, do you know. And one of the other things in, 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 in what I would call effective strategy is you can is using themes to focus. So yes. maybe five, six maximum themes that um, by which people help, help people understand how things are contributing, both the business as usual type projects and, 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 and the operations and also your strategic initiatives and your change. So simplifying it a strategy into very clear themes, continually referring and discussing those themes and talking to them, reinforcing, um, reflecting everything back to those in terms of the activity really helps to, crystal, to um, crystallize, articulate and reinforce the understanding of a strategy and what the thing is really about. And that helps, I think. OK, there's two more questions, if you don't mind, guys, we just might squeeze in. The first one was, how do you measure business value as opposed to tangible benefits? That's Irene Murphy. Um, business value. Well, the there's tangible benefits. Well, a, a benefit is is an outcome from an activity and, and value might be something that's ongoing. So so um, that that's how my definition works but that value is 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 what you uh, achieve in an ongoing way um so typically related to ta a target so a, a sales target will have a value a, a a utilization target will have a value but i guess a, a program will have a benefit which will instigate some of those things so that, that's that's how I how I see the difference between benefit and value. Value is ongoing. Benefit is perhaps has got a a, a finite uh, finite um, a thing finite uh, measurement to it. And I guess so the, the same thing, thing is. Thing, but... 
Sorry. And I guess the key thing is to link that benefit into what value, what strategic value yes. you, you've been delivered. So you have that understanding. Yeah. Then, so. Be, because for me, the, the 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 tangible benefit is the output of the strategic program, or whatever yeah. it is. But it links the overall business value because you don't just get that benefit once. If you if you streamline, you know, that FT headcount might be there for the next 10 years. So it's an ongoing value to the business in terms of their financial processing and their PL. And last question then from Jer is culture eats strategy for breakfast still relevant in the current hybrid environment? Interesting question, Jer. Oh, well, this, is, a, is, sorry, this is an old chestnut, the culture eats strategy yeah. for breakfast. Um, personal view, I, I, they're not different. It, it, strategy is about people, culture is about people in the organisation. Um, if I take back strategy into its, um, away from its uh, highfalutin, um, very important thing, in reality, in reality, strategy is about helping people to understand, make sense of, where their organization is, where it's wanting to go and how they can contribute to it. It's as simple as that. The culture of an organization is how people work together and operate and the values they have in terms of helping the organization move forward and the relationships. So ultimately, both are about people. In a hybrid environment, you still need that understanding about the it's it's really you find you have to find the solutions about how you get the engagement and the understanding about about activity and you may need to invest more time in doing that with people in different workplaces at the time you may need to have new ways of actually communicating and reinforcing and engaging in in a different way than you might do in a, in a with everybody in a in a single location but ultimately, it's about people and it's about engaging with people and getting them to do the understanding. And you have, to, as a leader, you have to find the solutions for that. So, to so my mind, about uh, the mechanics of engagement basically as well it is are, are different in the hybrid environment, yeah. but the engagement still stays. It's still the same. It's just, or even a little bit more because there isn't maybe that ability to get together as often, like fly everybody from around the world to one place, because I think we've lost the appetite for doing that without real just reason. Um, but then the mechanics of engagement may be a little bit more, and then the mechanics have to be a little bit different is what I'm hearing, David. Absolutely. Yeah. My, my, my view on, on culture each strategy is, is, well, for me, culture is how you do things around here. And and maybe uh, the, what we need to do is 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 to close the gap between how we do things around here and how we really should be doing things around here. So culture is 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 part of uh, culture is is part of of the the work of strategy. So th there's there's I, I don't like the, the distinction like that. For me for me if you're not addressing culture in your strategy, you, you're missing the point. And and um, and your, your culture has. To, to change it, it has to develop and grow but you're not going to have do that by magic so uh um yeah, yeah culture each strategy agree. don't don't buy yeah. it it's uh, absolutely agree okay guys it's now 12 59 we're just on the button for one o'clock um all that remains is to thank everybody we had a good attendance today just touching 50 people and to thank both the Davids for what I think has been a very enlightening sharing of their experiences and their their multitude of learnings from engaging in this subject. Um, we will have the recording available on the site. The slides will be available and um, we'll put some links, maybe David, to the Praxis framework and maybe some other good things you might think might be useful. Yep. We usually try to give a couple of helpful links, so I'll follow up in an email so we can do that as well. Um, so thank you very much for your attendance and um, have a good day. Enjoy the rest of your working day and thank you for attending the community practice. One last thing, if you have any any for the attendees, if you have any subjects that you'd like us to discuss at the PMO community practice, please feel free to reach out to me. I put my email, my uh, PMI chapter email in the chat. You can also get me on LinkedIn. If you look at me on LinkedIn, I'll answer a message on LinkedIn as well. So it was our, my pleasure to host you again today, our third event in this community practice series. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.